Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Cybar Chats. Today we're going to be covering some of the core functions within BARS CISO Advisory Services. And to do that, we're speaking with BARS Director of CISO Advisory, Mitch Evans. So Mitch, I'll jump right in. What are some of the core functions or services within BARS CISO Advisory Practice? Yeah, so a, a lot of things. Uh, think of it, anything that an information security officer would do full-time at an organization. Um, so that would be things like risk assessment, security awareness training, vendor risk management, customer due diligence responses, policy procedure documentation, external audits, facilitating those, uh, internal audits as far as security is related, security project management, <clears throat> and other compliance related topics as well. Uh, but basically all of that would comprise what a virtual or VCISO does. So we're basically, typically what the type of organization that needs a virtual CISO is one that is maybe a little, not, not quite mature enough to have uh, a, a full-time CISO. Maybe they don't have the, the business case to hire a full-time employee to handle something like that. They're also, full-time CISOs are kind of expensive. Um, they're a little difficult to find right now. Uh, security positions in general are pretty hard to find right now, or I guess security candidates. So basically what we would do is we provide outsourced security consulting for all things cybersecurity, those services we, I, I mentioned before, um, as well as things like if you need a new security monitoring tool for say your AWS environment, we would, we, you know, we have a, a bank of tools that whether other clients have used them or we just know about them, we'll reach out to them and evaluate those tools for you, for our clients, I mean, for, uh, what, what fits best for them based on what they do, the types of information they handle, the business environment they operate in. Uh, another thing we might do is provide advisory services during a data breach. So if you have some sort of hack or leakage or whatever it is, we can provide consulting services to kind of handle that from all the way from identification to, to containment, to uh, communications, to basically anything involved with, with incident response or a data breach. Um, could also be that you're going through a security audit, like a SOC 2 audit, ISO 27001. Uh, those audits can be kind of challenging and we can come in and assist with wh whether it's getting cl these clients ready for the audits or interfacing with the audit auditors themselves, kind of acting as a go-between to translate what auditors ask for to what people who don't do audits uh, or auditors ask these people who don't do audits what they do and or uh, for information or requests and we will kind of translate that for them because we kind of speak both languages and then also we have a just a network of cybersecurity experts partners uh, that we can leverage to help our clients achieve their security goals um, compliance requirements whether the compliance be with regulations or customer customer commitments contracts so uh, those are just some examples of, of what a virtual CISO would do. But basically at BAR, what we do is offer our, our advisory services whenever our clients need it. Um, and then one-off projects related to those topics from the first question, so. So you talked a little bit about this previously, the type of company that would need um, CISO advisory services. Can you go into detail a little more on that and, and why those types of companies would need CISO advisory services? Yeah. So. Typically, like yeah, like I mentioned earlier, larger enterprises they're going to have the resources to go out and hire a, a full-time CISO. They build a security and compliance team, but many many companies out there, especially startups, small to medium-sized businesses, they don't have whether they don't have the resources to hire a full-time CISO or um, they just don't want to at the at, at, at the given moment. They'll reach out and 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 because they still need these types of services. They're dealing with a lot of times you'll have a small business selling software, for example, to large enterprises and those large enterprise enterprises come back and say, we need you to comply with all this stuff. And these startups with, you know, 20 employees are kind of just at a, at a loss, not only because they don't understand a lot of times what people, what these enterprises are asking for, but also they just don't have the resources or time to do it. So typically that's who we'd be helping out are people are companies who just don't have the, resources to hire somebody internally uh, and they're required to comply with whether it's a regulation customer requirements contracts um, and then a bar specifically we specialize in advising and consulting 
companies that provide software as a service. So oftentimes those are small to medium sized businesses that don't have, um, <clears throat> like, I, like I've mentioned a few times, the, the resources, whether it be time or money to hire those a full-time CISO. And that's where we, we come in and, and act as the, the go between, between when they're a small business and need security advising, but aren't quite to the point where they want to hire a full-time CISO. And the goal is eventually, I mean, obviously w this would <laughs> mean that we would lose a client, but the goal is to eventually just to bridge that gap between being a small business, lack of resources to, all right, now we're ready to hire our own CISO. So that's where, where our kind of project life cycle would come in. And can you talk a little bit about BAR's process and approach? Yeah, so we, we, typically we take, it, depend, it depends on the project, but let's say that it's a company that just doesn't have a security program at all, a formal security program. They might have um, security controls here and there, but they haven't formalized anything in like policies or procedures or um, controls. So what we would do is take our four phase approach, first phase being, uh, the scoping phase where we figure out the why before the how. So we would come up with a, a plan based on the client's needs, uh, the environment they operate in, the types of data they might be handling, the, uh, the commitments they have to maybe customers or regulators. And based on that, we will come up with a plan and then we'll assess where they're at against what, where they want to be. So let's say they want, right now they're like I mentioned, no formal security program, but they want to get to the point where let's maybe they have a nice so 27,001 certification goal. Well, we would say, all right, this is what you have in place. This is where your gaps are. Um, and then that leads us into the third phase, which would be the roadmap where we've identified gaps. We, we provide recommendations on how to fix those gaps. And then we provide a roadmap to getting to, in this case, ISO 27,001 certification. Um, and then the final phase is what we call remediation. And we basically manage that remediation, the re all the remediations that need to take place. We would be act acting mostly as a project manager, but for things like risk assessments, like the services I mentioned before, risk assessments, vendor risk assessments, um, policy procedure documentation, those are the types of things where we can actually help them remediate those gaps because those are some of the services we do. And then the more technical or uh, fixes that may require engineering personnel, we kind of manage those, project manage those tasks with the client and maybe some outsourced consultants like penetration testers or maybe sometimes it's even like outsourced legal advice for like a privacy policy or a data protection agreement. So those are, the, the, those are kind of the four phases. And then after remediation, you know, it kind of moves into just an ongoing management. So that's where we would just typically just make ourselves available for a set amount of hours uh, per month and they can bounce ideas off us, come to us if they have a data breach or one-off projects as they come up. So what sets BARS CISO advisory services apart? Yeah, so I guess this, the answer to this is it'll kind of contradict a little bit of what I just said because we do have our approach, but our first priority is an approach that fits our clients. Um, and that will typically involve what their customers or stakeholders, including regulators, require. Um, so, you know, we're going to apply our approach in whatever way fits our client's operating environment. Again, going back to the types of data they process, what they want or need for a security or compliance program. Uh, and we take our expertise across all things cybersecurity and compliance, and we would tailor that four-phased approach to fit each client. Um, a lot of the other companies out there or advisors out there would, would just say, you know, my way or the highway. Um, and we're more of this is the highway and how do you want to get on that highway and stay on it? Um, and we'll, we'll help the client client do that within the overall structure of how we do things. But again, it's going to be heavily tailored to each client because each client's different. Um, each client, you could have two clients that do the exact same thing, but they have different goals or they have different types of people that work for them or different customers. Um, so we really try to tailor our approach to fit what, what our client actually needs. Got it. Well, Mitch, thank you so much for this overview. And we look forward to learning more about BARS CISO advisory services in a future Cybar chat. Thanks again. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks.